Boys, the countdown has begun. Exorg officially, unofficially, has an expiration date set. So you've probably seen the older thing, the row 9.0 release notes under chapter 7, specifically under 7.8 graphics infrastructure. Exorg server is now deprecated and will be removed in a future major role release. The default desktop session is now the Wayland session in most cases. The X11 protocol remains fully supported using the X Wayland backend. As a result, applications that require X11 can run in the Wayland session. Red Hat is working on resolving the remaining problems and gaps in the Wayland session for outstanding problems in Wayland. See the known issues. And at this time, you could switch back to the X or backend, and in Rel 9, that can still be done. But at this point back in 2022, what we didn't know is what a future major Rel release meant. Did that mean Rel 10, Rel 11, Rel 12? It was basically up in the air, but we could infer what it meant based on prior deprecations. For example, did you know back in the Rel 7 days, you could use both GNOME and KDE officially on Rel? With the release of Rel 7.6, all of the KDE packages were marked as deprecated. And then in the following release, Rel 8, all packages related to the KDE Plasma workspaces have been removed, and it is no longer possible to use KDE as an alternative to the default GNOME desktop environment. Red Hat does not support migration from RHEL 7 with KDE to RHEL 8 GNOME. Users of RHEL 7 with KDE are recommended to back up their data and install RHEL 8 with the GNOME shell. So basically, you are on your own due to the migration. But now, we know exactly what is going to happen to Exorg. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 10 plans for Wayland and the Exorg server. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to this. That tends to happen. If you'd like to read the entire blog post yourself, I'll leave it linked in the description down below, but I'll just focus on the parts that I think are important. So, let's get started then. The transition from the now 30 plus year old X window system to the newer Wayland based stack has been happening for the past 15 or so years, and Red Hat has been involved from the start. Over time, it became clear that the X11 protocol and the Xorg server had fundamental issues that needed to be addressed, and Wayland was the solution. Today, Wayland has been recognized as the de facto windowing and display infrastructure solution. Amongst the graphics developers and desktop developers, that's almost certainly true. Amongst the users, it's a little bit more split. Now, my audience obviously has a lot of people that are big on customization and digging into their system, so maybe it's not the best group to survey. But even amongst them, it's somewhere around 55% Wayland. Amongst the more, you know, I just use Linux as a tool people, those people probably are just using whatever the distro ships. And as more distros start shipping Wayland by default, that number is going to get higher and higher and higher and higher. Through this transition, Red Hat has been supporting both Xorg and Wayland stacks. This splits the time we and the upstream community, that being, you know, the application developers, the desktop developers, so on and so forth, have available to support new features and for fixing bugs. That being said, the community has been building new features and addressing gaps in Wayland, while new development in the Xorg server and X11 infrastructure have been winding down, with the exception of X Wayland. While it is great that Wayland has been greatly enhanced, it does mean there's an increased maintenance burden in both stacks, with lots of new work to maintain in Wayland and lots of older legacy work to maintain in Xorg. This has become a difficult situation to sustain. Now, a lot of people call me a Wayland shill, but I will be the first person to admit that I understand why the project has a bad reputation. It's because the developers did it to themselves, and the first 10 or so years of the project were an absolute joke with the devs being afraid of basic X11 features. The idea of a consistent way to do screen capture is only maybe like three or so years old. We're still in the process of dealing with global hotkeys. There were mass arguments just to get VR headsets working, and don't get me started on things like multi-window apps and screen tearing. 
I get called a Wayland shill because I acknowledge the fact the developers have turned over a new leaf and are trying to make things better. Now, there is still a lot of bike shedding and it's still going to take a very long time. But we are getting things actually fixed and discussions are actually happening. And that is a new thing. That's maybe the past two or three years. Okay, rant over. Now, this is the part that most of you guys probably want to hear. This effort gave us the confidence to first make Wayland a fault for most use cases in RHEL 8, followed up with the deprecating of Exorg server in RHEL 9, with the intention of its removal in a future release. Earlier this year, 2023, as part of our RHEL 10 planning, we made a study to understand Wayland's status, not only from an infrastructure perspective, but also from an ecosystem perspective. The result of this evaluation is that while there are still some gaps in applications that need some level of adaptation, we believe the Wayland infrastructure and ecosystem are in good shape, and that we're on a good path for the identified blockers to be resolved by the time RHEL 10 is out plan to be released on the first half of 2025. So the first half of 2025 is the day of reckoning then. Not exactly. So, Rel 9 was first released on May 17th, 2022, and the Rel 9 series is always going to have Exorg available. Now, like any good distro that has a lot of resources, Rel maintains a legacy support period. And that support period is actually really, really long. A lot longer than what you get on something like Ubuntu. Ten whole years. This part is a little bit different. I'll get to that in a moment. So we have three categories. Full support, maintenance support phase, and the extended life phase. This is the row 7 graph. Back at that point, they broke down support phase into support 1 and support 2. Nowadays, it just looks like this. Now, full support is what you would expect. You get feature updates, bug fixes, security fixes, possibly new hardware support, and all of this stuff you'd expect from a distro that is being updated. Now, it's not a rolling release, so don't expect that, but you will get updates to the packages you have installed. Maintenance support is more like what you would typically expect from an LTS release. You don't get any new feature updates, but if there are bugs or security issues that need to be addressed, those will be addressed, and possibly new hardware support if it doesn't require any substantial changes. But this is very much the phase where, hey, you should be migrating to the next version of RHEL. Now, the extended life phase is a paid additional service. In this phase, you won't be getting feature updates or bug fixes or security fixes. This version of RHEL is dead. Stop using it. What you are paying for is technical support. They'll help you maintain your systems, along with help you migrate up to the next version. And this phase only goes on for three years. But for what we're talking about today, it doesn't matter. Nothing is going to be changing in the final phase. TLDR, 2025 is not the day that Xorg is dead in RHEL. Instead, because RHEL 9 is still going to be supported, it is going to be until 2032 when the maintenance support phase ends and Red Hat is no longer updating the Xorg server. But you're probably wondering, why does this matter to me? I am not a RHEL user. I am a desktop Linux user. I have never planned to use RHEL. I am never going to use RHEL. Surely this has absolutely zero effect on me. Well, if you think that, you forgot how big Red Hat is. As you probably all know, even after a bunch of people were fired, Red Hat is still a giant company, and they have their tendrils in every little part of Linux, whether it's the audio stack, the graphic stack, the desktop, the init system, or every single little other part of Linux, there is probably at least a couple of Red Hat engineers involved. And would you be surprised if I said that a lot of the maintenance of Xorg is done by Red Hat engineers? And those Red Hat engineers are doing so because a Red Hat product needs Xorg. So what do you think is going to happen when a Red Hat product no longer needs Xorg? 
there's probably going to be a couple less people maintaining the project, and there's already not that many people doing so. And don't think this is just an XOR directly thing. Many of the GNOME developers are also Red Hat employees. Many of the Fedora developers are also Red Hat employees. Now, they do say, while we recognize the energy behind some distributions and Fedora spins moving towards a similar future, this decision is limited to RHEL 10. We recognize other Linux distributions have different needs and decision structures. And additionally, we are not aware of plans for similar efforts in Fedora. I guess they just didn't pay attention to the Fedora KDE thing. Maybe they just don't care about Fedora KDE. Nor are we involved in similar efforts besides sharing our knowledge. This is not a hard line in the sand where nobody from Red Hat is allowed to work on Excel. They can go and do so if they want to do so. But Red Hat is pulling their support from Exorg. This is a clear shift in the tides of Linux. And you should expect those very Red Hat influenced projects, if they haven't done so already, to start pulling out their support for Exorg in the coming years. I am genuinely surprised that Fedora KDE is the first one to do it. I honestly expected Fedora Workstation, but I guess Neil just did not want anything to do with Exorg anymore. And the exact same way it happened with System D, a Red Hat influence project starts the trend, and then more and more distros start adopting it themselves. And there'll come a point where projects like Ubuntu say, hmm, let's not just have Wayland be the default, let's just not install the Xorg package full stop. And at some point in the future, possibly not even have a package available. Now, there's always going to be distros like Arch Linux with the AUR, Gen2, and things like that. But the mainline distros, that's what's going to happen. Now, I know people don't like to hear this, but it needs to be said. To the people out there who are dead set on running Xorg and never want to use Wayland, that is going to be fine on your old hardware, no problems whatsoever. But keep in mind, if you want Xorg to continue working with newer dependencies on newer hardware, somebody is going to need to step up to maintain the project, have a concerted effort to do so, and hopefully get other people involved as well. Because as it's going, the people that are currently maintaining Xorg are going to be stepping away from the project, and whilst there's going to be some maintenance from the OpenBSD side with Zenakara, the Linux side is going away. If this was happening today, or even in 2025, I would probably say it's just a little bit too soon. I don't think all the problems are going to be addressed by 2025. But by 2032... Look, feel free to quote me on this, but I feel like by then, it is going to be in a near-perfect state for the majority of users. I could be wrong, I can't see into the future, but that's my prediction. But let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you have really strong feelings about Xorg, and I'm sure there's going to be some interesting discussions that happen. So please let me know. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe to Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and the day of reckoning is upon us.